Hey, hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Light Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today we're taking a look at some really cool ships from our Carrier Assault Battle. Now all the ships that you're going to be seeing in today's video have been designed by Shook. I'm going to go over the scenario, show you the ships, show you the briefing room, and just give you some really cool ideas for building your own. Or if you want to take part in this scenario, jump on the Discord and we'll get you involved when we have it going next. So let's have a look here. Something that Shook really does quite cool is he incorporates this Viking style design into lots of the house ships. In this case, we've got that burning eye to kind of incite fear into the enemy, but it's just a really nice shape. Looks really cool. And then it extends itself into both of the runways that are divided up by that central neck column. Then you can see in each of them hangar bays, we have this small connector. Now, the thing that you really want to be careful about with this ship is these turrets right here. These can shred a ship up when it lands on the deck or attempts to land on the deck, so you need to remove them before landing. The turrets on the exterior are quite interesting as well we've got small interior turrets that present themselves as a really damn hard target as some of the fighters were trying to engage these the other day they were really struggling to take them out since they were so small and then we've got a variety of anti-fighter and standard flak turrets and that's really cool indeed coming a little bit further you can see some of the side thrust and then we've got a repeat of the turrets underneath as well so flying under this ship isn't safe either especially when you're fighting them coil cannons up at the front just a really cool it reminds me of like a old world meets new world sort of siege type battle carrier now as we continue going down the side you can see the name of this ship that's the ragnarok and we've got the how logo there on the side that is the group he is part of in some of the servers in this community so as we continue working our way to the rear we have the roof of the hangar that's divided up with this cool sort of trellis type effect we've also got these little seating areas here that we saw some of the the players running to and trying to gun down other players that were landing on the decks or just crashing fighters in general you can see there's a few of them spaced around there as we come to the back you've got the massive battle turrets that are pretty much too slow to really take anything out and then we work our way into the engine bay at the back so you can see the engine bays are tilted to the side we've got some hydrogen thrusters around the side with a few atmospheric spaced about now the entrance to the actual ship is through this back door now, if Shook is there and about, shall we enter into the ship? You want yep. to give us a little bit of a tour of the hangar bay? So, ex explain this ship. You were telling you were, you were saying to me that you built it for this scenario. It didn't exist before this. Yeah, I built this ship specifically for this scenario. It's not meant to actually be used on a server or anything as a functioning ship for battle or anything. Because and one of one of the questions that we got from the comments of the battle video was why didn't we have fighters in here coming out or was that was that a design choice or just we needed more people to do something like that i do actually have a version of this that does have fighters that's what these pillars are for mm -hmm. but i figured it might be a little bit too op for the thing to have fighters as well okay and i wanted to keep it pretty pretty simple it's so already as, pretty complicated so as we start to go in the interior here you've used more of the different colors blocks and i think the carbon on the floor looks really damn cool it kind of separates that floor without having to use you know them interior panels that some people use when they're building ships yeah you've also labeled it now so people will not get lost the lower deck is yeah. correctly labeled I was saying before when I was doing the intro about these little pads that you spaced around in different areas. Are these like little places where characters can run to and maybe attempt to shoot down you know, an enemy fighter or something? Yes, that's exactly what they are used for. In fact, during the battle, I was standing on this exact pad shooting at people who were shooting our engines. <laughs> right, let's head below. Let's begin the tour. So why did you put the entrance here at the back? Or is this more part of the scenario so it takes them longer to get to the reactor rooms? Uh, kind of a mix of that as well as I wanted some of the assault when the people actually on the ship going to the back I wanted some of it to take but above deck so mm -hmm. I put the above deck bit that we just went through and then come down to this area so we'll give you... a longer ways but also they get to see fighters and stuff flying around shooting stuff up. so on either side here you've got these well, these jump drives aren't they Yes. But they just add a little bit of detail and then you've continued that through the roof. I do think this interior is really nice and tidy and something that new he's added since the battle is these little platforms about and these are just for a little bit of cover aren't they as we're moving around the corridors. Yeah. Just break up the corridors it's not just a big long murder hole. Yeah, someone has to take cover. At least that because the corridors were difficult to fight through so in here 
we now have ourselves an armory. This was um, a med bay, wasn't it? Or a cryopod room? It was a cryo room. It was a cryo room, so we've got the weapons. And, and these are going to be stocked with a few supplies, so if people do raid this, they can get some extra ammunition and weapons, you think? Yeah, if you look inside of them, they've actually got stuff in them now. Oh, wow, there you go. Good to go. He's already equipped and ready to rock for fight. So let's go down this bright corridor. You can see that the ceiling's been ribbed above for some extra pleasure. Well, no, I mean extra detail. And as we come into the centre, we actually enter into this massive briefing room. Wow, imagine imagine actually being able to fill this with players. How many seats are in here, Shuck? Have you not counted? I haven't counted yet. <laughs> quite a few. <laughs> yeah, definitely quite a few. I mean, if I sit at this end, you sit at the other. I'd have to shout, You alright, Shuck? Can you just what? like a dot over there? What did you say? I can't hear you. <laughs> Maybe we need an intercom at this table, it's that big. Alright, come on, let's keep Feel going. Critical. So here at the end as well, tucked in this little room is a little kitchen, so if you get a bit hungry in your conference, you can just nip in there, put on the a snack on the microwave. Like a nice little pizza, mini pizza. We've got ourselves the poop pod, of course. Every ship needs one. It just depends on the place. I think that poop pod's gonna be really good, you know, for people hiding in it and ambushing, you know, as people come past. Yeah, as uh, one of the things you're allowed to do is the only thing you're allowed grinding on is doors. So if you have a grinder, you can grind this door down and either rebuild it or leave it, and use it as a basically a hidey hole. <laughs> and this and these corridors here, the bit we're going over now, was one of the most contested areas. The amount of deaths that we had in one of these as we were pushing through. I don't know if it was because the angle and people were just wiggling in and out and shooting, but there was a lot of deaths going on. Yeah, that really was. It's kind of ridiculous. So what's this doing here? Or is this just you playing around? Or is it like a storage of one of these extra cockpits? Oh, uh, This whole area is just a big storage area. And it's meant to basically give you a little firefight area. There's oh, one on okay, either side okay, and they're both okay. stocked differently. So what would you advise to people playing this area? Lights off and try to sneak through and shoot as many people, catch them off guard as possible? Or would you just say try to rush for one of these doors on the side? Uh, yeah, I'd say sneak through, keep your eyes open in case there is someone, because we do like hiding in these things around boxes and corners and stuff. Yeah, Because yeah. it's a pretty good choke point for the for us to use. So if we keep going, Aaron just runs into a wall. We've got new signs up here for the reactors and stuff. We've got a bit more of a, a horrible corridor to fight through. That'll probably end many space engineers' lives. And then the thing is with all these corridors as well is they're very compact and they're quite scary to be in each one of them. And as we continue walking to this end little room here, we've got ourselves another little... Is, is this got more weapons in? Or is this one empty? No, this particular one's empty. No, these are old. I haven't fixed them yet. And then we've got one of the many reactor rooms. The reactor, the reactors are armed by pressing one button and disarm with the other one, aren't they, Shuck? So it's left to arm, right to disarm. Number one will arm it, and number three starts a countdown for 20 seconds. Okay, and these are parallel on either side of the ship, aren't they? Yep, the whole ship should be symmetrical. Okay, should be, should be. So if, if you read your sign here, you either accidentally go to the stores, that's this way. You don't really want to go to the stores, there's not really much going on here, is this, Shuck? It's just, there's just an extra internal, yeah, internal really. thruster you could maybe sabotage. And there's a thruster in here, maybe you could sabotage as well. I did add a door back here that allows you to get into the thruster pods for the actual ship. Oh, you didn't show me this before. Oh, so here's the hydrogen fuel cells. Yeah, we're actually in one of the back thruster pods now. And so I was thinking about adding a warhead back here as a bonus sabotage thing. Oh, I like that, yeah. More warheads the better, I always say, Shuck. Let's, let's, continue, let's continue on. You didn't show me that in the, in the walkthrough we did before, did you forget? I completely forgot until now. Oh, fair enough. Right, so this way, if we go this way, should, we should go into the rec room and the med room, as well as the reactor. So let's have a look. So if we continue through here, another hallway firefight, that would be horrible. At least you put these little slits in as well, so there's a little bit of cover as you die in between the different points. Because the thing is a lot of people don't realise as well, Shuck, is you have to design a ship quite differently, you know, if you want people to fight in it. Yeah, uh, that's why this ship's, like, not good for just normal use. Mm -hmm. Is I designed it to be basically a firefight level on a ship that moves. <laughs> right, now we're so, into... Go on, what were you going to say? I was going to say, it's, it's, that's why it's not like very efficient or nothing. 
Yeah, well, the, I think they understand though it's not efficient. It's more designed to literally be a house, so to say. So you've got a glass ceiling here, or is this just a cut hole to that you've left in it from testing? That's just the access point. So oh, okay, can, okay. So I don't have to run through the entire thing to get so, here. So, and the final thing is this little reactor here. So where's the bridge? I feel like we miss the bridge every time I go around this ship. It's right here. Oh, so the bridge is in the med room too. Oh, okay, let's let's take this on a yep. little test drive. Uh, what's the acceleration like? Let's have a look. Oh, it's not too bad. What would you recommend piloting this thing at though, Shuck? So it was so it was usable. Or do you recommend that they go full pelt? Uh, depends on the way you want to do it. If you want the scenario to last as short as possible, you go full tilt through the canyons, and it mm -hmm. should last only about four minutes. Yeah. But I'd re recommend keeping that like 24, like 20 to 24. That way it lasts a good mm -hmm. minimum of like 16 minutes or so. See, I like how you give it a low gyroscopic movement left and right as well, so the pilot's kind of got to really yank the controls, you know, left and right to move it like that. I, yeah, I would, yeah. I would, I would love to have a go at pilot this thing maybe in a fight. Let's uh, slow this thing down anyway. So now we're over at the attacker ships. We've got three here to have a look at. We've got ourselves the small nimble jackal. We've got ourselves the hyena, a little bit more heavily firepower orientated. And then we've got the troop transport Kodiak. So let's have a look at the jackal to start with. Now the jackal itself has two massive nacelle top thrusters. Reminds me a little bit of something that you'd expect to see out of Star Wars, one of the little racers. And you can see each of the sides there is nicely decorated with this blue, yellow, and white stripes. Coming towards the rear, we have three thrusters as well as these really cool sort of sloped engine inlets. Now the only issue with this particular ship was it not being able to stop. Well, it's not really an issue, is it, Shuck? No, it's by design. It's meant to kind of have a feel to it and fly more like a plane than a helicopter. Right? And by doing so, we had a near collision with yourself on the top deck, and it made for some really fantastic sort of gameplay, just because pilots were just overcooking it and weren't ready to pull up or maneuver around it. That was great to see. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. So next up we have the Hyena. Now the Hyena itself, Shook, is a little bit more heavily armed, and it can take a bit more of a punch, can't it, as well? Yeah, it's actually got uh, quite a bit of heavy armor on it just along the sides to protect the internal component. And what was your thought about behind the two cockpits on this particular one? Was it like one guy could possibly jump off and do some sabotage while the other guy is supporting him with fire, or is it just two cockpits just trying to get people over there a bit quicker? The original idea behind this was to be a gunboat or a gunship with a turret on the top and a turret on the bottom. Oh, okay. So the very forward, yeah, the very most forward cockpit was a gunner seat. And I just left it on because it looked better with two cockpits than just... Oh, I see. I see. I see. And then as we work into the rear, we've got them angled engines that you love to build. We've got kind of slope. It, it reminds me, like I said, the Valkyrie from 40k. And then at the back, we have ourselves that sort of tail section. That looks really cool. It reminds me of like a mini TIE fighter. I don't know if you, you can see that. Like as we look at it. Yeah. If you look at it from here, it's like a, a little, little TIE fighter from the back. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to the Kodiak. So the Kodiak is your troop transport. The idea of loading this guy up, it's got the med bay on board. Once you hit the deck, you lock your landing gears. And this thing's got some turrets to, you know, to fend off any pesky saboteurs from getting back on the deck and disabling this thing. We've also got missile pods in the front. We've, we've not got as much firepower in terms of Gatling guns, though, do we? But I guess the turrets kind of mess up, kind of make up for it, Shock. What do you think? Yeah, pretty much. It's The Gatling guns are more meant to do a strafing run on an area that you're wanting to land at. Mm -hmm. And so you can kind of clear it out with the guns and the rockets and then just land there and anyone there should be dead. No, it was very it was very effective this. Especially, it will, they only used one of them to manage to get inside and raid it. I think that was probably due to the hydrogen engines giving it that you know, really quite maneuverable sort of aspect to it. Yeah. And then um, at the back here we've got the big square type thrusters and then you kind of detail them by staggering the blocks and not you know completing the slope on each one of them. That's pretty cool, that little concept. And then you've got the same sort of rotor, or the rear tail section, but just a little bit wider. 
on this particular design. I really like it. it. The theme feels right, you know, between them. You know, when you see a group of ships and you go, right, that is one faction. It really, they really do feel like that faction's rubbed off. So let's um, let's just pop in some of them and take them for a little bit of a test flight because I'm sure people really want to have a go of that. So there we go. We'll just tilt this up and you can see what I mean about it swoops around this one. It doesn't stop dead quickly. But you can see as the Gatling guns fire up, it can really shred away at a particular point. So let's just uh, bring this one in for a landing. You want to land it while um, I jump into the next one. Let's uh, try our best to get over here without our gyroscope. We've got, we got everything on there. So the top cockpit is the pilot seat. We'll power ourselves up, get ourselves in. So the hyena is a bit more maneuverable and it stops a little bit quicker. And also them Gatling guns are absolutely great for suppression. The amount of them you can get, you can take out a thrust or an engine in pretty much seconds. And then you've got 40 missiles. You've limited the ammunition no shook, haven't you? So it's a little bit more balanced. Yeah, I reduced it just because the original way you basically had unlimited ammo. So the other part, uh, landing platform over there, is actually where you can come to Fuel refuel with critical. ammo if you need to. Oh, if the one I was shooting at. Somehow make it back alive. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the one you let. Okay, so we've got the Kodiak now. So the Kodiak, I'm expecting it to, to be a bit of a heavier type deal. I need to power it up. Okay, I need to get all my thrusters online. So three, there we go. Just engage my landing gears, and there we go. And is the high? Has it got enough hydrogen to last quite a while? This ship, or is that something you've got to be aware of as well? Uh, it should last you quite a while. It's also got quite a few hydrogen generators and quite a lot of ice in it, so it should last you long enough to get to the ship and come back and have quite a bit more flight time after that. Lovely, lovely indeed. Yeah, it does. This one has a little bit more side drift, but you kind of expect that, you know, for a bigger ship. So they kind of all handle like the, the you know, the role you expect them to be like. Yeah. Let's put it on the deck and let's check out your briefing room. So this is the final thing that we want to check out, and this room itself got a lot of questions. So let me see if my legs can work. There we go. We have got a new addition to the briefing room as well. That's the little layout on the side, but we'll focus on the map to start with. So what was your inspiration behind this map, or, and how did you do it? I might want to explain to people so they can do it as well. So basically I copied uh, a guy on YouTube named Zebra Monkey. Mm -hmm. And the way he took his pictures was he just flew straight up and then looked down and took a picture of the area. The way he did it was a bit more complicated, but I did it as a bit simpler. Mm -hmm. And then I just went on a image editing thing and added the lines and everything, and then just move it over to these LCD panels. So you use the, what was it, uh, something to text converter. I can't remember what it is, but I, I know. I think I know what you used. I think the people watching will probably know what you used as well. Right, next up, we have the blueprint down here as well of the actual ship that we're going to attack. We've already looked at this guy, but the blueprint here is just to help the attacking team get a bit of an idea of, you know, the different parts. And you've got a little fighter flying around at the back there as well. Uh, no, this is just the barrels dislodged. Oh, the barrels. Oh, I thought it was a fight. You know, when we were playing, I was like, oh, he's put like a little bit of detail in, like a fighter flying around it or something. But no, it's just the bar <laughs> The barrels have come off the massive cannon and no longer work. <laughs> All right, let's, let's go yeah, over they to just the, orbit it now. Go over to the side little blueprint here. So we've got the reactor room. We've got the medical rooms marked. So hopefully people will not get lost, even though that place is a maze. Um, in its own right, but there is only one way in and one way out through the back of the ship unless you grind through the top and then you pretty much sign your own death warrant to be lost in there forever. Essentially, yeah. So is there is there anything else to add or is there anything information you'd like to give the community about this map uh, before we wrap this up? Uh, I will be trying to go ahead and make it public so that people can download it and everything but my computer has been acting kind of weird lately and not been allowing me to download things to the workshop so i'm going to try but it may not get to happen today so uh, there you go will. fingers fingers crossed that you can get it up so you guys can play with your friends as well but if you can't you can always pop on our discord and i believe we will be hosting this event again sometime i don't know a specific date but it's all about popping on and getting involved you're most likely to find out through that way anyway i'd like to thank you shuck for showing us around this creation yeah no problem